I've seen sites, uh, you know, where chemicals were stored and used and all before, but never had I seen a site to where the chemicals were actually leaking in, in disarray like this plant was. On April 3, 1991, a routine police investigation by the Gretna Police Department turned into a startling discovery, one so significant it took the city of Gretna more than 18 years to reverse. Well, the the uh, condition was like everything had been spread around and just thrown around. You know, it wasn't really organized or anything like that. There were drums that were overturned. There were uh, aerosol cans that maybe were empty and hadn't been filled yet, just thrown about. Uh, lids for the aerosol cans. And then, like I said, the, the large storage tanks were leaking some type of chemicals out of them. The chemicals discovered belonged to Malter International, a company that mixed and distributed products that ranged from janitorial supplies to pesticides. In 1989, Malter closed its doors. Two years later, the abandoned site became an environmental hazard and the EPA was called to clean it up. They had a bunch of containers out there. They had some leaking drums and tanks. They addressed all that material that was in the tanks and drums and, and debris on site. And they consolidated some, some soils on site. Uh, but that they limited to that. They just removed what was readily removable and disposed of it in, in different places, uh, depending on what the material was. Following the $1.6 million EPA cleanup, the property remained vacant except for occasional vandals and homeless camps. In 1994, a major fire broke out that caused a public outcry. Gretna could no longer wait for the property to be redeveloped on its own. So Gretna developed a plan, and that plan was to be well thought out to say from the beginning to the end, how can we get this property back into commerce? With a plan in place, the city of Gretna was able to get some limited funding to test the site, but didn't have any funding for remediation. I received a phone call from the uh, Congressman Jefferson's office that said that the city of Gretna needs to apply for an EPA Brownfields grant. And uh, I didn't know what Brownfields was at the time. And what was very interesting about it, what they were talking about seemed to fit what we had with the problem with Malter. The Brownfields Initiative began in the early 90s as a way to redevelop industrial sites. As all of you know, I have asked Congress to enact a new $2 billion incentive to encourage the cleanup and, a, and a redevelopment of abandoned industrial sites, our so-called Brownfields Initiative. This the Brownfields program was developed to help put industrial sites back into use that were once contaminated or perceived to be by giving local governments grants and loans for cleanup. Congress. This is good for America. It's good economics. We filed for the grant and promptly were denied. We filed it again, lost it out a second time. So I was wondering why they keep telling me I need to apply for it. I, I apply and I don't get it. And fortunately, uh, part of my team came together with me and said, look, I'll help you get the grant, but the first thing we do is get on a plane and go in to Dallas and talk to the EPA to find out what do we need to do. So we planned a trip. We went to uh, Region 6 uh, EPA office in Dallas. We met with the uh, key people and uh, uh, the, they explained to us exactly what the program was about and uh, uh, what are the uh, main components of that program that need to be put together in order for the application to become a successful application. In 1998, Gretna was awarded a Brownfields pilot grant. We were up against some big boys <laughs> in trying to get this grant. Uh, city of New Orleans, uh, Baton Rouge, uh, other major cities. And uh, by hearing the announcement that we got the uh, uh, grant, we were very excited because we knew that just opened up the door for us. The EPA Brownfields grant enabled us to list all of these sites that we felt that could be perceived as a brownfield didn't mean that it was contaminated. What it meant was that we needed to have further study and look to see if that property could be placed into commerce. By creating a comprehensive review of the city's brownfields, Gretna determined that the Malter site truly ranked as number one. We went to EPA and said, okay, here's the program that you gave us the $200,000 to work with and come up with this package and all the additional information, 
We have it here in a book form, in a report form. We want to go beyond this. The great thing about the EPA and the Brownfields program was that they had not only a pilot money, but they came up with revolving loan funds. In 2000, the city of Gretna received the Brownfields Revolving Loan Fund to implement their remediation plan. Some of the challenges were, of course, uh, I mean, the city did not have an, you know, an infinite budget. They had a you know, Brownfields Revolving Loan Fund, some DEQ grants for certain portions of the project, but uh, we had to stay within those constraints. And in the end, it was the amount that could be spent was capped by the value of the property, the ultimate value of the property for resale. Because removing the contaminated soil proved too costly, Gretna chose to attack contaminants underground. To neutralize the main contaminant, which was methylene chloride, the remediation required drilling 27 wells in and around the contaminated area, inserting steam into the ground and heating the ground to 113 degrees Fahrenheit before an oxidant neutralizer could be injected into the soil. This was the first time this remediation technique was used in Louisiana. And it worked very, very well. It, um, for example, one location I remember being 11,000 parts per million of methylene chloride prior to remediation. In the end, over 99% of that was completely neutralized. After 18 years and complications due to delays from the change of ownership of the prospective buyer, Hurricane Katrina, and the legal hurdles of getting clear title, the city of Gretna sold the newly remediated Malter Brownfield. I was very excited to hear, finally, this, this project that we had started in 1998, in uh, 2009, <laughs> it uh, became a reality. And uh, uh, it was a ex very exciting moment. What makes me so proud of the project that we just completed is that when the, in the 1970s, when the EPA was first uh, developed and came on as a U.S. agency, I really believe that the people with the EPA believed that they were going to clean up America. We were awarded the fund in, in the year 2000, and it took a long time. It wasn't until 2009 that all of those funds were totally expended, but it cleaned up a total site. Gretna is a great place. I don't think that anyone living in a community can ask for more. This is the right place to be and a great place to raise a family. The city of Gretna is a wonderful community. I guess we don't want to be better than anybody else, but we want to be the best that we can be.